This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. You got to check out this video on the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com because, um, well, there's this great woman. Uh, she's a cranky mom, and I can appreciate that. Uh, she got stuck in the living room chair, and she can't get out. Uh, and, you know, luckily for her, her daughter was there uh, to help her. Yeah, well, at least to, you know, record her while this was all going on for our entertainment. That's what's important. Mom? What? <laughs> Are you in trouble? I cannot get out of this dumb chair. Look at that thing. It's like a sinkhole back right there. And it just runs out there like a truck bed. Or you can't get out. <laughs> you know that. You said in it last time we were here. Well, you I said just, the same thing. I forgot. Well, just get over here and help me. I'm plumb out of breath. Oh, remind me not to get in that thing again. Look at it. <laughs> I'm plumb out of breath. I'm plumb talking. out of breath. Yeah. <laughs> plumb amazing. out of breath. I like, I told you this was a problem before. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I said it again. Dude, is this, I mean, we placed um, her with my dad, and it's basically the same conversation when my dad visits. He yeah. always sits in, like, the, the spot that I tell him. is that, Well, we have a different couch now, but when we had the older couch, like, my fat ass worked that hole in the, you know, not actual <laughs> hole, but... Excuse wow, me. Pardon, my, whoa. It hey. created a giant dent in the couch. A sinkhole, yes. Yes, exactly like this. My, but my dad would want to sit in that one because that's the one where you can put your legs up. But then he couldn't get out of it. And he's just like, ah, F and this and that. And I'm just like, Dad, here, let me first let me help you up. And how about you sit in the corner where there's no one ever sits in that spot and, and the, the cushion's super firm. Yeah, I know. And I, I, I know the pain. I mean, you could easily put me in that situation and be like, oh, here we go. I'm plumb out of breath. Plumb out of breath. I can't get out of this chair. And much respect to the daughter for not helping mom, but filming it before she helped mom. Yeah, because yeah, I want to say you watch that, though. Mom, you know, she works it. She gets out of there pretty much mostly on her own. And I, so I, I think mom deserves a little credit. But the, the sinkhole is like a blessing and a curse, I feel, because, yeah, it sucks getting out of it. But, man, there's nothing better than when that couch sucks you in and you're just, like, nice and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So comfortable. Yeah. Uh, well, but see, but you have the, you, you know, you young kids, you got the strength to get out of it. <laughs> you know, it's like quicksand, I tell you. I can't get out. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was uh, that was funny. I don't want to know how old she is, by the way, because I be, I, I'm, I'm hoping she's older than me. I, found, I really do. I found the uh, original, like the the daughter's uh, Instagram page, and apparently she films her mom a lot for like TikTok and stuff. Her mom's just a cranky lady, and she just messes with her all the time. Oh. She has that like that Tammy Faye look with the mat like the crazy amount of uh, makeup on her oh, face. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. And but like the makeup makes her look angrier. Yes. That's perfect for the TikToks. <laughs> I wonder if right. that's like her thing. Like she's like, I got to do my makeup so I can look angry. Wow, so you know, so that that makes sense as to why. Well, oh yeah, I'm seeing a close up of her. You're right. She looks just like Tammy Faye. Right. Whoa. Do you know you guys even know who Tammy Faye is? 
Oh, oh they don't all I, you know, I realized that the minute I said it. I'm like, that was a terrible call, Steve. I can't, <laughs> I can't think of anyone else who puts their makeup on and looks that way. Do you? I, you know what? You said it, and I followed along with you. Me You're too. right. It's yeah. been how long? Has it been over 20 years? It has to be, right? That people know who Tammy Faye Baker is, who... Joe, thumbs of- up, thumbs down, thumbs down. She sounds oh. real familiar, though. Oh, oh, now you're saying that just to, like, you know, appease us. <laughs> well, no, oh, I think it's because yeah. there's a movie coming out with her, about her, I think, Jessica Chastain and Andrew Garfield are in oh, it. So That's why. So we're ahead of the curve. Yeah, we are ahead of the curve. Yeah, I the youngins. Yeah, I read an article yeah. where... <laughs> HBO's first look, the eyes of Tammy Faye. Yeah, and uh, Jessica Chastain's been complaining about that because she said the, 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 the way she had to make up her eyelashes and her eyes for, like, Tammy Faye, she said she's done permanent damage. So I mean, so she's like, well, I wrecked myself trying to play this crazy lady, and then like, who, who really went out of her mind to have crazy eyelashes. It just came out this last weekend. Yeah, see, see oh. we're on top of things. Yeah, we're pop are. culture icons. Look at us. We know what we're doing. <laughs> Danny and Vicky yeah. just somehow a thirty-year-old relate actually is Woo, relevant. Yeah, yeah. It was intentional, Rev. <laughs> I was testing all of you and. The older crew passed the test. Yeah. It just goes to show you, no matter how famous you think you are, at some point, someone's not going to know who you are. You know, as en- enough time passes, people are going to go, I don't know who that is. Unless a really cool documentary comes out and makes you cool again. Yeah. Or, well, they or were interesting again. Yeah, they were, I mean, popular for the wrong reasons, if you ask me. They were just a, a bit of a mess, you know. And So uh, she was like a boy, like married, the, the, she was part of like a, a, like a super evangelical thing, yes. right? Yeah, and, and Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Yep. And then at some point, I can't remember why, but she was crying. And that's all I remember as a kid. Like, she was yeah. crying, and her makeup was running, and she just seemed a little couple cards short of a full deck. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they, they, I guess they were, they were, they, they were investigated for a lot of things that maybe weren't too cool. That's what, that's my yeah. memory is just like, you know, like we see, uh, you know, the, uh, what's that show on HBO? The, the, the Mind Stones, Gladstones. Gemstones. The, hey, the, right? Yeah, the, the Fabulous Gemstones. I don't know. I don't know. The, the one with, uh, <laughs> Something yeah, Glorious yeah. Gemstones. Yeah. Know. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, yeah. And, Righteous um, Gemstones. Oh, yeah. Righteous. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we remember that? Well, we, I feel like the righteous gemstones were kind of somewhat based on the, the the bakers to some degree, or at least that type of family. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, but I, sure. all I really remember her for w- w- anything about her was that she just wore a ridiculous amount of makeup. Yeah, there you go. Kind of like Danny. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Danny, you need to start a cult. Yeah, you need a little I more cult. I should. Cult Maybe yeah. I'll get a documentary and people won't remember me. Yeah. There we In go. In 30 oh, years, it. you'll be remembered. <laughs> and Jessica Chastain will complain that, you know, I ruined my eyes trying to play Danny all that makeup he oh, wears. Uh, yeah. yeah, eyeliner is insane. Yeah, it's horrible. Oh. Hey, I don't know if you, uh, you know this, but uh, there was a teen that was hospitalized uh, for trying to u- uh, use a USB cord in a way that it's definitely not recommended. Uh-oh. Yep. Uh, what did this teen do? Steve will tell you. He's got the mix report for you at 620 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock at 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm-fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million, These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. The world needed a safer trampoline. Dr. Keith Alexander, inventor of the spring-free trampoline, wanted to bring the joy of trampolining to his daughter. His wife said they were too dangerous, so he invented his own. Spring-free trampoline is the world's safest trampoline with no springs or hard edges. 
Now, parents can have peace of mind that their kids are outside jumping safely. To learn more, visit springfreetrampoline.com. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. Well informed on the issues of the day? Not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is the Mix Report. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks to Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical for giving us the Mix Report. And today, yet another day to celebrate pizza. And I'm okay with it because today is National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Nice. Oh, yeah. Just had some homemade pepperoni pizza from Joe and uh, J-Rubs on Friday wow. night. Wow. You, man, look at you a couple days ahead of the curve. Oh, yeah. We know what's up. See, well, and I had some some homemade pepperoni pizza from Mod Pizza yesterday. It was delicious. Nice. Yeah, during mm. the game. Oh, Mod Pizza. Oh. Time to get some Mod Pizza over at my house, though, and my daughter could take Peepa over yeah. and over and over <laughs> as that pizza's in front of her face. <laughs> mm. So happy National Pepperoni Peepa Day to Baby Tatum. <laughs> it's also National String Cheese Day, which is the ultimate way to test if you're a serial killer or not. If you just bite through the string cheese... As opposed to peeling it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me go get my shovel and continue on my serial killing way. <laughs> the worst. Of course, you are the one Jeez. that bites through the, <laughs> the string cheese. I mean, look, it's uh, when you're driving, it's a great one-handed snack. I mean, I don't got time to pull it apart. Yeah, I'll there's, just... there's certain foods you just don't eat while driving, string cheese being one of them. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. I, I enjoy the string cheese in its, uh, in its solid form. The only time you take a full chunk bite out of it is like if it's, if it's all of a sudden become mozzarella sticks. Then it's yeah, okay. which, which, by the way, is really what we're talking about. <laughs> Pretty much. Naked yeah. mozzarella sticks. But that's all right. If I'm a serial killer for doing the mozzarella stick without the uh, batter, then that's what I am. Well, at least you're not this guy. A 15-year-old, actually, uh, in Britain. He had to go undergo uh, emergency surgery. <laughs> why I don't know how why? I can. Why? I'm going to try you? my best on this one, guys. Apparently, they had to remove a USB cable that became lodged in his urethra. Ah! You mean he put a cable in his John Thomas? I don't know if he was trying to charge his phone and he thought maybe some, like, you know, human current can make that happen. Oh, I'm not sure. Not wow. Wow, wow, wow. No, actually, he was, quote, triggered by sexual curiosity. And he was oh, using the cable oh, wow. as a way to measure his manhood. Oh, whoa, well. Get a tape measure, buddy. Right? Yeah. Or, I mean, or just plus, lie like all of us. Yeah. <laughs> From the inside, he was trying to. Oh, I, maybe I, maybe he thought he would get a little bit more uh, length if he went, uh, you know, inside out. Maybe I, I don't know, but he tried uh, to remove the cable himself. Uh, he wasn't able to. Oh boy! So then he had to go to his mom and be like, "Mom, what's going on? Can you help me with this?" Mom's questioning whether that she should be a mom anymore after something like that. I'm <laughs> yeah, sure that's like wow. So she takes him to the emergency room. According to doctors, his recovery was uneventful. And he was discharged the next day. Oh. Wow. Well, I mean, it was a USB dock, right? I mean, that's the whole idea. Mm-hmm. Aye, aye, aye. Mm-hmm. No. I would usually say that the next guy is the biggest idiot of the day, but I don't think you could top that last story. But this All guy, right. he's from Indiana, and he was arrested for calling 911 repeatedly. The reason being? Yes. He just wanted to tell them that he was tired. Oh, he kept well, calling yeah, you, to say, I'm tired. Well, that's who you call. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple times, 61 years old, which that's uh, probably why he was tired. I'm right? tired. Is that your impression of someone who's your age? <laughs> yeah. That's my impression of that guy. He's not, uh, don't, don't bring up the fact that he's my age. He's Wait, an old guy. You just I did mean, an old man voice for someone who's 61. I'm, ti- I'm tired. Yeah, I did. You're absolutely. Well, you know what? That's what a lot of people think 61 is. Uh, you know, on the text line. Me. BJ, on the text line, we get a lot of people that sometimes, like, you know, you get under your skin. Like, I mean, obviously, we have a lot of great listeners, but sometimes you get someone that's just miserable oh, or yeah. someone that says something to you and you just want to clap back. And you're like, you know what? Take the high road. I never wanted to say F off to a texter more than the text that we received this morning that said, how awesome was that Tennessee game? <laughs> oh, yeah. Son let's of clap. a bitch. <laughs> yeah, let's clap back at that guy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, some are calling it one of the worst choke jobs in the Pete Carroll era. The Seahawks were up by two touchdowns going into the fourth quarter and blew it. Losing in overtime to the Tennessee Titans, 33-30. to 30. I mean, the first half was like, talk, talk about tell two different halves. The first half, I'm like, jeez, yeah. man, this team is just me and Danny are texting how much we love the team. And then as the night went on or the day went on, our text became increasingly more depressing uh, because it was just like, man, they looked unstoppable in the first half. And then that second half was just 
That was be careful tough. What you, be careful what you wish for. We always wanted this team to be a better, you know, first half starter. And yep. boy, oh boy, I mean, you, what do you want? Do you want them to, you know, be good in the first half or good in the second half? I, I want the second half Seahawks back. I just want them to win. That's all. Especially yeah. when you have a game where it looks like you're supposed to win. And then Derrick Henry just turned it on in the second half. In the first half, I think he only got like 35 yards rushing. Second half, like 100 and something, 150 something yards. It was yeah, ridiculous. It, was, it really, whatever. They figured something out. Um, and really, I, they, I think their defense won the game. It's really what did it for them. Their defense helped them win the entire game because their offense was doing nothing. And their defense said, all right, well, we'll just keep their offense off the field and we'll tire out their defense that way. Uh, especially in that fourth quarter. That was a, it was, and then so many stupid penalties, uh, one after another. Oh, yeah, there was that, 10 yeah. penalties on the Hawks that cost them about 100 yards, a few that yeah. extended some pretty important plays. In fact, after the game, Pete Carroll talked about the game, especially the penalties and the issues with that. We did so many good things, and then we, we really hurt ourselves too many times when you're playing a good team. The penalties were just so costly. So, so many first downs off penalties when we had them and, and really had the control of the situation. And uh, it was really unfortunate that we, were, we, we weren't we were poised enough, and I totally take that up myself. There was just opportunities for us to make better decisions that we didn't make. And I know sometimes I get these guys so freaking crazy that that uh, they're, they're just going going out after it and, and uh, miss mirrors. Man, it was crazy seeing Pete Carroll though at halftime, like losing his mind in front of the twelves. That was pretty cool. The, the the crowd was awesome. Everything was looking great. Yeah, and then it all went to Poopsville. Yeah, it did. Uh, but one one bright spot of the game, you have to give props to uh, Bobby Wagner. Twenty tackles as a franchise yeah. record, breaking the previous record of nineteen tackles, which was a record that he held. Which I thought was yeah. pretty cool. But the best part, I say best, but you know, you know what I mean. Afterwards, they're talking to Bobby Wagner, and he just kind of put things in perspective when they brought up the fact that he has a franchise record of 20 tackles and had a really good game. Uh, I mean, it's cool, but, you know, we lost, so it don't, it don't really matter. <laughs> yeah. I feel you, Bobby. Yeah, well, you like to hear that, though. You really like to hear that a dude is caring about the W's more than records. No, but we have to be optimistic about next game to taking on the Minnesota Vikings. And here's Jamal Adams, who had a couple bad penalties during this game. So hopefully he could turn things around in the next game, saying, hey, we're going to be 24 hour rule. Things are done. We move on to the next one. I've seen 24 hour rule. We got to learn from it. Yeah, it hurts. Especially losing at home in front of the fans. Uh, man, they brought the juice and the energy today. <sighs> Obviously, it, ro- it didn't roll our way, but that's okay, man. We got another another uh, opportunity at hand, and we're looking forward to that challenge. Well, let's hope that happens. And they yeah, Ty- I don't know if you saw Tyler Lockett, but I wonder if he's going to get talked to because he really did come kind of, I mean, he, I, I felt like in a vague, backwards way, he kind of threw maybe the offensive coordinator under the bus by saying, we need to learn how to manage the game better when, we, we know, when, you know, when, you know, when we got a lead like that. Yeah, and, maybe run the ball more. And I don't yeah, know. Exa- that's exactly yeah. what I think he was alluding to. And other people said the same thing, like, you know, that, yeah, what happened to us? And, uh, you know, and also Tyler said, look, when the momentum's going the other way, we got to figure out how to get it back because you're going to have that happen in games, uh, especially when you take a lead. And then all of a sudden, and I get it because they've been on the other side of that where they've taken the momentum and ended up with a great second half wins when they were trailing. And maybe, um, I don't know, DK Metcalf needs to, like, meditate before a game so he can kind of come into the game in a better headspace. Oh, the, the blue hair's not working because it's they supposed brought to it be? Up. <laughs> they brought up yeah. that he has blue hair because so, he wants cooler heads will prevail. Yeah. That's not seems to be the case with him this year. No. Especially in that game. Hey, Mariners won, though. That's exciting. Is it? Hey, man. Is it, though? it is because, you know what? Their record right now is 80 and 69. So if they never lose again Yay. this season. I will be a happy camper. Also, they, they need to not lose again this season if they w- want to make a run for the playoffs because they're still four games out. Uh, they play the A's tonight, so the A's are ahead of them. So if you could sweep the A's, at least it's Well, something. remember we said that last week at this time? Yeah, I know, man. We did when we said if they could sleep the, sweep the Red Sox, and they did not. Sounders lost over the weekend. Oh, they come on! Yeah, Salt Lake. Uh, the Cougars uh, lost. Uh, although wow. they look nice in those jerseys. Uh, right. And then the Huskies won, though, 52-3. to So there you go. All right. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's the thing. As far as weather, 64 degrees. Uh, thanks to Keep you all for giving us a major report, and that's what's up. Yeah, man. Uh, it is. It's you know. It's a sad Monday for a lot of us because of just like you said, the way that game started, and we now know how it feels for a lot of the other teams. We have done that so much to other teams that just roll all over us, and we look like you know we we're sad so much for that first half of the game, and then the you know the the Hawks would always come back and win a lot of times. Now we are on the other side of that, and it does suck to be that that team that looks like we manhandled you. How did we let this happen, dude? And when they missed that extra point, I'm like ah. 
I hope that doesn't bite us in the ass later on in the game. And boy, yeah. oh boy, did that. I mean, you can't blame that one play. Obviously, there's a lot of other reasons, but it was just like a perfect storm of just screw ups that just led to them losing that game in overtime. Yeah, the good news is is that it happened in, in week two. And so, and I think also that we talked about the fact that this is Shane Waldron's first season with us. And I think, you know, he could learn from some things as well. Um, it's surely a game they, they could have won. That's a fact. But yeah, the penalties, man, that was just a beating. And when you're an idiot, I, just in life, when you're an idiot, you are going to pay for that. I like what Pete said, though, you know, when he says, so he gets them so worked up and maybe, you know, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, that maybe that amps them up so much. And he's like, maybe I got to learn to teach them, even though you're amped up, don't be an idiot. And I, I thought that was kind of cool because I mean, it does make some sense. The taunting call, though, I was just like, ah, man, that seems I know it's kind of new. ridiculous. But it's so new. And, you know, you, you heard James Lofton talk about it, uh, you know, who was the uh, analyst on, uh, you know, on the game. And it is, everybody says, yeah, it sucks, but the, the league wants it to stop. So you're going to have to just not do it anymore. But you're right, Steve. It seemed very ticky-tack. And there was some weird stuff. That, that safety at the end, I mean, it was funny seeing like a bunch of like former Seattle players like, that was totally a safety. The game should be over, but I'm glad it's not. At the time, until eventually yeah, uh, I don't, I mean, that the, field goal to win, but that was weird. I'm not complaining about the officiating from a standpoint we got robbed. I just thought it was messy. I, I mean, you know, maybe week two for the refs, too. Yeah, you're right, Steve. How did they not call that a safety and game over? I, I, the forward progress? I mean, you watch the replay and you look like, What? No, he was at the end zone, and it should be done. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. Or, yeah, that was uh, or or at least intentional grounding, which I thought would have screwed the game anyway. But wow. uh, and then we got another great text: the Seahawks, last place in the division. Ha ha! I'm done yeah, with the text messages today. <laughs> yeah, I know our division's <laughs> tough, though. Uh, and Dave Wyman said it yesterday too. There are a lot of good football teams this year. It seems like it's parity central when it comes to the NFL. You, you can't count anybody out. Um, and the Vikings were, I thought for sure the Vikings were maybe, oh, maybe they're not a good team. And then they turned around and gave the Cardinals a hell of a game. And then the Cardinals scared the hell out of me because they still found a way to come back. Is, is, everybody looks like the Seahawks, but the Seahawks. I don't like it, Steve. Well, we'll talk more about that. Is it what time are we talking to Mitch? Uh, 717. Mitch Levy from Mitch Unfiltered will join yeah. us. We'll see if Mitch can give us something. I was all excited happy, to but... talk to him at halftime. Yeah, and then I was just dreading it now for the rest of the. <laughs> I was worried. I really was worried about. I was worried about the uh, Titans because I just didn't think that we could stop Henry the way they did, uh, the way the Cardinals did last week. And, and then I thought, well, I'm an idiot. They're, they're stopping him pretty well. And then <laughs> the second half was a whole different story. Uh, on Friday, Steve, he did get this one right. What actor co-stars alongside Tina Fey in the comedy Date Night? Will Farrell. No. Date night, date night. Uh, 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 Jimmy Fallon. No. Date night, date night. Um, <laughs> Steve Carell? Yes! Nice job. Man, I still... Boy, I wish I could be in your head because no, let's see don't. how that all happened. <laughs> for that moment, I really wanted to see, like, how did you get there? And you know what? And you got there. Good for you, buddy. All right, well, listen. You still have a shot at beating Steve. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs. We'll do it. At 649 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. What's the difference between filing for bankruptcy and credit counseling? Uh, credit counseling is a is a useful process in some circumstances, but it does show up on your credit. In fact, from a credit scoring standpoint, credit counseling shows up just like a bankruptcy, so it's going to affect your credit as negatively as filing bankruptcy. In credit counseling, the idea is, is that a credit counselor works with your creditors on your behalf to try to lower interest rates or work out payment plans with your creditors uh, to, to pay back your debt over time. Uh, in credit counseling, you almost always pay back 100% of the debt, sometimes at lower interest. And, of course, some creditors will participate in that process and some won't. Uh, so you're usually left with kind of a mixed uh, result with credit counseling and, of course, a high payment. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.
Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.